It is game day for the Baltimore Ravens as they look to pick up their first win of the 2024 season against the Dallas Cowboys in week three. We break down everything you need to know, final predictions, keys to victory, and so much more coming up next on this edition of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire here with you on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here, making Locked On Ravens a part of your day and your first listen each and every day. We're free and available for you, all podcasting platforms that includes in video form on YouTube where you can hit that like and subscribe button. We just hit 8,000 subscribers or in audio form, you can follow along, subscribe as well. The audio community continues to grow each and every single day. Today's game day edition of Lockdown Ravens is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown NFL and use code all lowercase lockdown NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Oh, big game today. Big game today for the Baltimore Ravens. Again, going to Dallas, facing off against the Dallas Cowboys, Lamar Jackson. 20 and one against the NFC. So hopefully that NFC magic can come out once again for Lamar. Baltimore needs this game. They need it in a bad way. We're going to be talking about the keys to victory. We're going to be talking about predictions, updates to the injury reports, and how the Ravens can win this game and what they need to do in order to get a victory and go out of Dallas with that win. So let's just let's just dive into it again. We're doing game day episodes now every single Sunday. You know we're during Monday night games, Thursday night games, we have episodes out anyway, but new thing this season is going to be these game day episodes coming out. So really excited to do these is get everybody pumped up, right? I know the, the excitement might be a little bit down after the 0-2 start, but hey, you know what? Hopefully they can avoid the 0-3 start because the, the <laughs> let me tell you, the energy would be even further down there. But let's start off with just the latest on, on Baltimore right now. We don't know if Nate Wiggins is going to clear this protocol here. I think they're going to, you know, take it up to game time with that. I don't actually know if they are going to make an announcement on that. You know, we'll probably hear something on it. Uh, probably in the early afternoon, I would say. Maybe in the morning. Could be in the morning on that. At the time of this recording, at least, that there's been no update on Nate Wiggins. But the Ravens did elevate two players. From their practice squad, and that would be running back Chris Collier and defensive back Kadar Holman. So the fact they elevated another corner doesn't necessarily shock me. We don't really know, but it's not John Kelly this week for the third running back spot. It is actually Chris Collier. So Kelly had been the running back elevated for the past two games. Chris Collier gets the nod for this one, some special teams value for him. And yeah, I mean, I don't expect him to make a huge impact, but he's the guy instead of John Kelly this week. Again, for those who missed it on Friday, Baltimore's injury report, only one player for the Ravens is out. And that is Salah, who's dealing with some personal issues. Other than that, you have three questionable players in Deontay Hardy, David Ajabo, and Nate Wiggins. Everybody else is good to go. No injury designation. And for Dallas, there aren't a ton either. Again, early in the week. We, you know, see the Lamb missed practice and Trevon Diggs missed practice, but for both teams relatively healthy here. I mean, the only players who are questionable is Jalen Brooks, who popped up on the injury report on Thursday with an ankle. You have Mazzy Smith, who didn't practice for the first two days, their defensive lineman, but did practice in a limited fashion on Friday. And then John Stevens, their tight end, was limited all three days so pretty healthy team for both sides you have some guys who are banged up but it's going to be stars on stars and speaking of if you're the Ravens just stop Dallas's stars now that's a lot easier said than done they're you know they, they have some great players over there on that Dallas side but particularly don't let CD Lamb do what Devontae Adams did to you in week two if you're Baltimore we had talked about it all last week leading up to that Las Vegas game right it's it's almost of the fact that just, just make someone else beat you, right? We talked about it. Jacoby Myers, Zamir White, Alexander Madison, Brock Bowers, and Brock Bowers, certainly, he got his. But 
just make someone else beat you. But Devontae had over 100 yards, had the touchdown. You cannot let C.D. Lamb do that. Let Brandon Cooks beat you. Let Jalen Tolbert beat you. Let Zeke Elliott beat you. Let somebody else beat you that is not their star. I expect Marlon Humphrey to go out there and probably shadow C.D. Lamb. And so actually we can bring out now, and if you've been listening to us here for this last week, we're doing the, the graphics now on the show, and I brought up these players to watch for game day. I think the first one you have to look at, you know, we'll talk Daniel Falele, but since we're on Marlon Humphrey, I think Marlon's a big player to watch. I, he is because of the fact that, well, at the end of the day, he's probably going to be the one who's matched up against CD the most, especially when he travels into the slot. CD plays out of the slot a decent amount. So Marlon, I would assume, would follow him. I wouldn't want to match up Kyle Hamilton or a linebacker on CD. I would probably just try to stick Marlon in there. I think Brandon Stevens will get some reps on him, but for the most part, this is going to be Marlon Humphrey's assignment, in my opinion. So really got to look at Marlon in this game, really got to lean on Marlon this game, and that's going to be really important for them in terms of getting off to a fast and consistent start on the defensive side of the ball. Because other than that, just shut down Dallas's run game. You know, Dallas has been pretty inefficient running the ball. There's a lot of running back drama there right now between who's, you know, getting the carries between Zeke Elliott, Rico Dowdle, right? They have Ravens legend Dalvin Cook on the practice squad, although he's not going to play a role in this game at all. But just shut down Dallas's run game. Don't let them exploit Baltimore. Look, Baltimore's an incredible run defense. Don't let them do anything to you. They're 26 in the league, Dallas is, in rushing offense right now. 3.7 yards per attempt. So bottom five, essentially, bottom 10 in the league almost there. In Baltimore, as we have talked about with how good that run defense has been, 1.6 yards per carry given up to Las Vegas last Sunday. Baltimore has the best rushing defense in the league, giving up just 2.7 yards per carry. So if you can eliminate Dallas's run game, it is important as a defense to make an offense one-dimensional. Baltimore did that in week two against Las Vegas. Obviously, it didn't go their way. But no one was worried about the run game. No one was worried about Zamir White doing anything. No one was worried about Alexander Madison or Amir Abdullah doing anything. And, you know, they were able to get theirs towards the very, very end of the game. But you take a 1.6 yard per carry performance. I was so impressed with that defensive line. Obviously, hoping Namdi Matabike, Travis Jones, Adafi Owe, Calvin Noy, et cetera, are able to step up. Michael Pierce. So take away that aspect. And it just makes life on you so much easier if you are the defense. Doesn't make everything set in stone, right? But I think just taking that away and then putting pressure on Dak, forcing Dak into a couple of tough throws, turnover worthy throws, two interceptions on Dak is what I want to see. Two plus. I want to see at least two interceptions from Dak today from this defense. If I had to predict who those two would be, I would, I'm going to say Kyle Hamilton because I know he's expressed some frustration about the nagging injuries he's had. I'm going to say Kyle Hamilton gets one. And I'm going to say Brandon Stevens. I'm going to say Brandon Stevens gets another one. So if, the, if they get two interceptions, those are my picks for the two guys I would expect. Wouldn't be shocked if Trenton Simpson got one either. That'd be my, that'd be my runner up guy. You know, I have one, two, and then the third. But that's going to be important. You know, we saw how turnovers affected the game on Sunday, especially with that Lamar Jackson interception. Really felt like Baltimore had a shot to pull away there, and then the ball bounces off with Rashad Bateman's hands into Robert Spillane's arms, and that's one of the key points, one of the many key turning points in that game. So on the defensive side of the ball, shut down the run game. Dallas's run game has not been good this season, so you have an advantage there if you're the Ravens. And then obviously the big point on defense is – Baltimore's pass defense has been terrible. They, they're 26 in net yards per attempt allowed, giving up seven. They are dead last in the league in total yards given up in, yeah, that total there with 514. And again, if you're new to Locked on Ravens or if you haven't heard me in my description of how I judge pass and run defense and pass and run offense, is I go off of the yards per attempt, not the total yards, because obviously – if you're an offense and you run the ball 200 times a game, you're going to have more yards than a team that runs the ball 100 times a game. But it's with how efficient you are in those carries is what I judge on. So if that team that has 100 carries a game averages 5.7 yards per carry and the team that has 200 carries 
averages 3.2, then the first one, despite having less carries, is the better run offense. So I say Baltimore has the 26th best passing defense in the league based off an eight yards per attempt. Dallas, just for those numbers, Dallas's offense is, where is it, 24th in net yards per attempt, passing at 5.6. So Dallas was embarrassed at home. They're going to be a team that's angry, ready to, you know, right the ship. They've had two straight embarrassing home losses, obviously dating back last season in that Green Bay game in the playoffs and then the Saints game this year. They don't want to make it three, but, hey, you know what? Baltimore needs a win. It's a must-win game for this team because 0-3 – we're going to talk about that heading into the second part of the show for this Ravens team. So coming up, we're talking about how the Ravens offense can take advantage of the Dallas defense and why this game is so important for the Ravens for multiple different reasons. Stay tuned. Plan to talk about here on Lockdown Ravens. First, the show is brought to you by FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and I love going on FanDuel, seeing all they have to offer. We have something a little different for you. Not through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5. Get a three-week free trial of FanDuel Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with YouTube TV base, FanDuel will be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon at a market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment. You can cancel any time. So for this Ravens and Cowboys game coming up today, Ravens open up is one and a half point favorites in this game. So if you like that line, head over to FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com. Download America's number one sports book. We're back for our second segment. Locked on Ravens. Kevin Ostriker still here with you on this game day edition on Sunday. Appreciate everybody tuning in today, making Locked on Ravens a part of your day. Your first listen here on this game day and each and every single day. Free and available for you. Again, as always, all podcasting platforms, video form on YouTube, audio form, wherever you decide to listen to your shows. You bring you five days a week of daily Ravens coverage, plus bonus episodes. We had one of those yesterday. We do pre-game episodes like this one on game day. We do keys to victory episode videos that come out every Saturday. And of course, after the Ravens and Cowboys game, probably right around 7, 7 8 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be right back here on Locked on Ravens, breaking down everything that happened in an instant reaction episode. So if you want Daily Ravens coverage, you have a friend or a family member who wants Daily Ravens coverage, send them our way here on Locked on Ravens. Now, the Ravens offense has to get off to a fast start. That's one of the biggest keys to me. Has to get off to a fast start. And really, all three of my keys to victory are on the offensive side of the ball. So we'll pull up that graphic now. And I mean, I guess the last one has a little bit to do with defense. But first of all, good offensive line play. The Ravens have to have a good offensive line game. We don't know what the offensive line is going to look like. If you're listening to this after the fact, I mean, you'll know. But obviously, as I'm recording this, heading into Sunday morning, I have, I have no idea what the offensive line is going to look like. John Harbaugh is very adamant about, oh, well, you know, we're a work in progress. And these guys, there's always going to be growing pains, express confidence. And uh, it just it was a whole thing this week where John Harbaugh's tone shifted from we're going to roll with our guys to – well, we don't really know who's going to be starting anywhere. So good offensive line play, number one, protect Lamar Jackson, open up your rushing lanes. I want this team to commit to play action, though. I might honestly move commit to play action above. Well, no, because offensive line, it all starts up front. But I am so serious about them committing to play action. I mean, it's so important that they do it because it can be so unstoppable in so many different ways. I mean, look, if you're talking about a team, and I'll, I'll kind of illustrate this here. If you are a defense and you're getting gashed on the ground, right? For So for Dallas's run defense, if you're gashing Dallas's run defense on the ground, Dallas, their defensive line got embarrassed. They got embarrassed on Sunday against the Saints. And their run defense as a result of that and just their season, it's not terrible in terms of yards per attempt. You know, you thought, oh, okay, they'd be 32nd or something. No, they're 23rd, giving up 4.9 yards per carry. But, I mean, look, if – the Ravens can establish that ground game with Derrick Henry, move guys off of the ball. And then you also add the element of Lamar Jackson and his legs into this as well with the run game. Teams are going to have to. So in this instance, Dallas, Dallas is going to have to start bringing more guys into the box and cheating down on some of these plays. And if you run option plays, if you run I formation handoffs, whatever you want to run in heavy set personnel, two tight ends, three tight ends, full back in there. You can run play action so effectively. We've seen it happen 
We've seen it happen. Guys will bite up on a play to try to get a head start and an advantage. Mark can just pull that ball back. You can just pull that thing back. And more often than not, you will probably either have a favorable one-on-one or a guy just breaking wide open because the defense will not have enough time to recover. That's what made the Ravens 2019 offense so dangerous and so just terrible to stop if they were, you know, a defense trying to go do something against them because the Ravens run offense was so historic that season. The teams had to stack the box. They had to bring in heavy personnel and players like Mark Andrews benefited from that. Marquise Brown was able to get open on a lot of plays and, you know, they didn't have this like star studded wide receiver core, but the play action game is part of the reason it's just, it goes hand in hand with everything. So I think the play action game hopefully should be a big part of it. Again, for those who don't know, the Ravens did run play action on only 12.8% of their plays in week two. And John Harbaugh has made an emphasis about that being bigger. I think it absolutely should be. If the Ravens can, can commit to play action, it could be a really nice game for this offense, but back to keys. Last thing is obviously late game execution. You have to be able to execute late 10 point lead in the fourth quarter. If that happens again, I don't think anybody in Baltimore is going to feel safe with that 10 point lead. So have to be able to get the job done. And look, I mean, it's just, it's infuriating when your team continues to do that over and over and over again. And I'm sure look, it's not only for the fans. I mean, the, the organization is definitely frustrated with it as well. Players, but you heard players like Lamar Jackson, Ronnie Stanley, Mark Andrews, all talk about this self-inflicted stuff, beating themselves. That's, that was the message. That was the message. So if you're up in a game, obviously it's not all on the players there. It's a, it's a combination of everything between players and coaches and whatnot. But you have to be able to have to be able to, to produce late in the game and make sure that you are executing to your tip top capacity late in that game. Now for the Ravens X factors, in this one, I mean, I'll pull back up the graphic because we can talk about the offensive line here for a second, and then we'll talk about Kyle Hamilton more in the final part of the show. But Daniel Falele is going to be a player to watch. He has to be. Now, the first part to watch is if he actually starts. <laughs> I think that's the first start, you know, starting to watch. Oh, is Daniel Falele going to play in this game? Because I think early in the week kind of felt like they were going to stick with him. But doesn't necessarily feel as in stone anymore, which... Ideally, you know, I think for Baltimore, their offensive line left to right. I would say Ronnie Stanley, Andrew Voorhees, Linderbaum, Ben Cleveland, Roger Rosengarten full time. Wouldn't be shocked if they tried to work Patrick McCary into the guard situation a little bit. I don't know what that looks like, but Roger Rosengarten earned a ton more playing time. He earned that starting job. But Daniel Falele is a guy that if he is going to play in this game, the Cowboys are going to pick that matchup. They're going to try to get Micah Parsons on him. They paid attention last week to what happened with Max Crosby, right? And now you have two stud edge rushers into Marcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons. They can go out of a field day. So we're going to see. But if it's Valele, you have to be able to get to your spots effectively. You have to be able to not get juked out by defensive backs one-on-one. You have to be able to shuffle your feet quickly enough to get to your spots get out into space, like all of that is going to be so important, but we don't know what that offensive line is going to look like. I would also love to see the Ravens open up this game with a couple of deep shots. It would be so good for this offense, not only for this game, but for the year long potential of the group to be able to go out there and put a couple deep shots on the board. You know, Lamar Jackson, he's top five in passing number five in the league in passing. But the yards per attempt, yards per completion, air yards per attempt, air yards per completion, it's not very high. And so if you get a 30-yard deep ball to Zay Flowers, 30-yard deep ball to Rashad Bateman, take a couple deep shots early. This deep ball offense has not been good over the last couple of years. Part of that's on Lamar. Part of that's on the wide receivers. They have to. Everybody has to get on the same page. Because if you can open up that deep passing game, like we just talked about with that play action, Teams will have to start fearing so many different aspects of your offense. They won't know where to put the manpower. And that is how we have seen this Ravens offense in a Lamar Jackson era. When we see these efforts, these blowout games, it's because the Ravens are working the defense over in multiple different aspects. So the defense all of a sudden is just like, well, if we commit to the run, they're going to beat us with the play action. If we commit to the pass, they're just going to run the ball. 
and just dominate and gash there. So the deep passing game opens up so much for your offense. I'd love to see them get, you know, 30, 40 yard shot down the field, 50 yard shot. You know, we've seen a bunch of 20 plus plays with Zay Flowers, Isaiah Likely, et cetera, 15 plus, 10 plus of Mark Andrews. But man, an early 30, 40 yard deep bomb would be incredible for this team. So obviously Baltimore's run offense has been good this season. I mean, they've been great. Their, their run offense is third in the league, 5.7 yards per carry. They should continue to ground and pound here. Don't overthink it. Use Derrick Henry. For the passing, they're 12th. Again, 6.4 net yards per attempt. Hasn't been awful there. I mean, Lamar has made a bunch of great throws. He's missed on throws as well. But you just have to be able to use all your pieces in your offense. That, to me, is going to be one of the most important things for this Ravens team against Dallas today. But coming up with the final part of the show, we'll talk about the final predictions we have for this game, other ways Baltimore can win this must-win game, and more states you can plan to talk about here on the show. First, the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. So, one Caleb William passing yard gets you one win on Prize Picks every week in September. That's right, only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss this deal on Prize Picks because it's gone when September ends. And Prize Picks puts their members first. So, all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. So, for this Ravens and Cowboys matchup today. If you want to pick the more on Zay Flowers and his receiving yards or the more on Mark Andrews and his receiving yards, be sure to do that over on Price Picks. Download the Price Picks app today and use code Lockdown NFL and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code Lockdown NFL on Price Picks. Get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed a Price Picks run your game. We're back. Our final segment locked on Ravens here on game day in week three. Kevin Allstriker still here with you as we gear up for the Ravens and Cowboys matchup. Must win game for the Ravens. Again, thank you for tuning in today and making Locked on Ravens a part of your day. Your first listen each and every day and especially here today on game day. And again, just a reminder, we said it earlier in the show, we'll be back here after the Ravens and Cowboys game to break down everything, instant reaction episode. So if it's a win, come celebrate. If it's a loss, come uh, come drown your sorrows with, with us over here on Locked on Ravens. And again, we had, we had 8,000 subscribers on YouTube recently, which is an incredible milestone. We, we're continuing to go here in the video form, but obviously in the audio form as well, it's continuing to grow. Social media, Twitter, Instagram has been awesome, and the support has been Amazing. So if you're an everyday or thank you for tuning in to the show each and every day. If you're new to the channel, welcome in. Hopefully you stay a while. And if you're somewhere in the middle, welcome back. Now the stats for 0-2 teams since the season expanded a couple years ago was not pretty. 32 teams have started 0-2. Two of those teams have made the playoffs. I've said it over and over again. 2022 Cincinnati Bengals, 2023 Houston Texans. Now the 0-3 stat this is not since the season expanded. This is actually since 1999, so the last 25 years. Even worse, and as you would expect. 129 teams have started 0-3. One, one team has made the playoffs. One. If you start 0-3, obviously we can say season's not over, long season, this, that, and the other. That's a big blow. That's a big blow especially because you have Buffalo, Cincinnati coming up. It's a first-place schedule. It, it would be tough to recover from that. Not saying it's impossible, but it would be tough. They, they'd have quite the uphill battle. So when I look at this game, when I look at the Ravens, they're pretty healthy overall, I would say, and, and knock on wood. There it is right there. That continues. To me, I feel like this is a game, and everybody feels the same way. Baltimore has to have it. They have over these next five games, you have to go two and one. You have to go two and one. If you go one and two, you start one and four. That's that's bad. That's still bad, right? If you win this game and drop the next two, that's still bad. You have to go two and one at least over these next three games, in my opinion. It, it's a necessity. But I think that look, this Ravens team, they cannot afford to have poor offensive line showing. They cannot afford to experiment. 
They cannot afford to have miscommunications. And this was stuff that we had always kind of talked about with this team of it's a new defensive coordinator. It's going to be a younger offensive line, younger pieces. They lost vets. There were always going to be these growing pains. But I think a lot of people thought, well, even if they lose to Kansas City in week one, it's a nice get back game against the Raiders in week two. And then he can go from there with that momentum. But neither team right now is riding any momentum. Baltimore hasn't won a game. Dallas got shellacked at home. They got just absolutely beat down. He just It's two teams that are mad, angry, and, and wanting to come in there and prove themselves. So for this Ravens team, again, I mentioned that Lamar Jackson 20-1 against the NFC. Hopefully he can improve to 21-1. Again, my favorite stat being that, uh, and it's for honestly for the sake of me, right? They have to, The Ravens have to win this game for me because my favorite, not favorite stat of all time, is that the one NFC quarterback to, to give Lamar Jackson a loss is Daniel Jones. I cannot have Dak Prescott add to that list. It's just, it's so much better when it's just Daniel Jones. The Ravens have to win this game, if not for anybody else, for me. So I can keep saying that stat because, again, it's my favorite, non-favorite stat to throw around because that loss was just so brutal. But to me, I think that Baltimore will get the job done. I do. I think that this can be a game that, gets out of hand potentially, but Dallas is a team that is very hit or miss. And we talked about this with Marcus Moser on lo- of locked on Cowboys when we did our crossover Thursday. And we've talked about this before too, where if Dallas is up early, they can get on a roll easily, but if they're down and they get hit first, you know, they get punched in the mouth first, it can spiral much like we saw against the saints last week. So I'm going to go a little bit of a closer game. Sticking with my final score prediction, I'm going 27-23. Ravens over the Cowboys. I think Baltimore improves the 1-2. Dallas falls the 1-2. It's a game they just have to have. And and this team, in my opinion, is too talented to start 0-3. If they do, we can have a conversation about the talent. And we can have a conversation about what this team is this season. And if they went too young overall and the coach, whatever, whatever we want to talk about, right? We can talk about it. But I think that Baltimore will get up for this game. They understand. Dallas is mad, but so is Baltimore. These are two good teams. Dallas's defense, just exploit them in the run game. See what happens. Get Derrick Henry going. Good offensive line play. I expect them to make the necessary changes to be able to get this job done. Kicker battle between Justin Tucker and Brandon Aubrey. So I'm excited to see that. In my opinion, the two best kickers in the league. So maybe we'll see a 60 plus yarder. Although I know with Justin Tucker struggles, I know some people might not be feeling confident in that. For Tucker, but you know what? Look, this Ravens, I'd, I'd be floored. I, I would be shocked if they started 0 3. You know, I said I'd be floored if they started 0 and 2 and consider me floored. I'd be all I'd be on the ground. Like I, I'd be literally on the ground. I'd probably, you know, start off the live show by being on the ground. Maybe, maybe. I don't know yet. But hopefully we don't hopefully it doesn't come to that. You know, hopefully this, this Ravens team can get the job done and I think it will come down to Baltimore's run game is much better than Dallas's run defense, and they will be able to dominate in that aspect. Hopefully it's just about the Ravens offense not getting too cute. Todd Munkin has done that over the last couple of weeks. We saw it last season. They just can't overthink. They can't just overthink and be in their own heads. Just do what you know you do best and work your other good qualities off of that. Don't try to sprinkle in some weird stuff. This is not the time for that. This is not the time for any of that. This is the time to go out there, get a win, get it convincingly, and get your season back on track. Because if you don't, your season is in serious jeopardy with multiple people maybe looking at different jobs next season or even sooner than that. So this is a game Baltimore has to have. It's kind of crazy. We're talking about a must-win game in week three in September. But it is what it is. And I say it all the time. It's my saying, my favorite one that, you know, I've come up with here. September losses don't matter in September. They matter in December. Well, if the Ravens go 0-3, those September losses matter in September. Their losses already do matter in September, right? You go 0-2, those losses matter now. And they're going to come back to haunt them in December too. But your September losses, you know, you can talk about it for playoff seating in December and, you know, division and seat, whatever it may be. But look. If you go 0 and 3 to start September, that's a very big hole you got to climb out of. And I just, I would be shocked if it happened. Now, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I'm not saying it's impossible. I certainly see scenarios where it does. 
but I'm going to say Baltimore gets the job done and I'm going to say they win the game, but maybe we're back here later today talking about a much different scenario. Hopefully not, but I'm going to knock on wood again. If Baltimore is able to do it and Lamar Jackson is able to replicate his NFC success. That's all I have for you here today here on this game day edition of Locked On Ravens. Hopefully everybody's having a good start to your game day and thank you for making us a part of your game day here on Locked On Ravens. Again, coming up after the game, we'll be back breaking down everything of what happened in that Ravens and Cowboys matchup. So stay tuned. I'll see you back here later today on Locked On Ravens.